What's going on world? Super glad that you guys uh, decided to tune in with us uh, For another episode of the Culturally Correct Show um, It's your boy Dane I'm here with Rome The faithful Rome um, <laughs> I'm going to let Rome introduce our uh, our guest today um, Because he has a lot more knowledge than I do um, I'd like to give a special shout out to our guest. She's uh. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. You gotta, you gotta give a shout out to the person that gave the assist, though. You can't just like immediately, like you know what I'm saying. Like there was an assist, wasn't there? Uh. There wasn't an assist. There yeah. wasn't a, like a, a nudge. Hey, yo, you should. Oh no, it was actually the complete opposite. She said she couldn't come on before she did. Oh. Like it was dang. actually some hate oh, going involved. <laughs> So you made me call it out. I wasn't even gonna okay, do it. Okay. Listen, I tried. I tried to get you in there. You know what I mean? But Try to lay it, lay it up. I did. I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, my bad. Nope. Nope. Um, this is uh what I would call a fitness guru. She is like a jack of all trades. Fitness got a couple masters in it also. Um, wow. this, this is my friend. She actually, uh, helped me drop a couple pounds when I was really dedicated to it. Me and her don't have a conversation after this is over <laughs> about it. Cause I'm getting up there again. Um, <laughs> my, uh, fitness guru, Ross Martin. Hey, Hey, what's up world? How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what's up. Ross. We are so glad that you decided to come out and kick it with us one time for yes. the one time. I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Interesting. Well, before we jump into it, tell us a little bit about what you do and, you know, who you are. Okay. So my nine to five, I'm an athletic trainer. Um, I do safety prevention and injury prevention for a electric company. But what I really am into is um, health education, health education and wellness prevention education. So one reason why they brought me on here, I have uh, along with Rome, I'm about to call you JJ. I don't know what, it, what you go by, but JJ, uh, his Multiple sister, <laughs> his sister and I, we have a business together together called Encourage Fitness, and um, through that we work with, mainly just start out with family and friends, but we're starting to expand a little bit, hopefully get larger, get more clients, but right now we just work with uh, the few individuals, family and friends, just helping them to reach fitness and wellness health goals that they may have it's not necessarily about trying to be skinny but you know just having the overall fitness from mental physical and spiritual so you know encourage fitness we're on facebook and social media you know it's the early plug but i'm just gonna keep plugging it all throughout the podcast so <laughs> dope what does uh encourage fitness what like how did you come up with encourage so uh your sister and Alana, we went back and forth through <laughs> A lot of names like we were trying to figure out what represents us because it's two individuals we were like strength in numbers uh we wanted to have some type of holistic meaning as well so but throughout all of it we were like well we're encouraging people we're trying to get them to just be a self-motivation so um encourage fitness is a acronym that's the correct term for it um, it stands for, I don't want to say it because that's, I feel like that's a pull to get people to come in, but all I know is it's a play off of encourage the word encourage ours, ours is spelled I N C O U R A G E versus the E N. So it has to do with inward self-motivation to reach your goals. And we're just here to help you along the journey. Awesome. Well, that's dope. Uh, I think that, uh, that holistic approach is, is what's missing in a lot of areas. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day, um, and I don't want to go off on a tangent because I'm really, uh, you know, uh, infamous for doing so. But I was talking to uh, somebody the other day, and we were talking about the church in particular, and I was saying, like, I, it's sad that we only see the church tackle this, like, one specific area, mm-hmm. that being the spiritual area where, like, you know, where – Where's the guidance uh, on the physical aspect? Where's the guidance uh, even on the financial aspect? Yeah. You know, um, life is full of layers and um, it's just, it's dope to see someone, um, you know, or an organization uh, wanting to uh, tackle multiple layers because life is multi-layered. So that's, yeah. that's dope. Kudos to you guys. Encourage fitness. That's right. 
<laughs> Encourage Fitness. Uh, I N C O U R A G E. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Follow them on all social media platforms. That's what's up. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Roz, what we do every week, uh, we jump into this segment called What I Realize. Um, and, you know, it's just a time to kind of speak on some revelations that we've gotten, um, you know, whether it be recent or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, so, uh, Rome, you got yours? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this week I want to say what I realize is that I always realize, but it, it got brought to the fore like that. Communication is key. Um, most people think about communicating, talking every day. You feel like you talk to somebody that's good communication. It's not always what you say, it's how you say it and how you deliver it. Um, nothing really spurred this is what I realized. Just doing some business with people and their interpretations of what you say and what they say is always different. But that's what I realized this week, that communication is key in all aspects of life, personal, financial, family. Just you got to communicate with people and be open to both ways of communication. Uh, Dope. No, I think that works in relationships. I'd imagine, uh, Roz, when you're helping people trying to get their life together physically, um, you know, as far as their wellness goes, you definitely got to be able to communicate. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, because... That food it's diary, stretchy, I know, yeah. is like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you you got to be honest. You got to be honest with the communication, too. You definitely. You got to be receptive. And, I mean, even on my end, you have to tone is key. Like he said, how you say it, how it's perceived. Because you don't want to come off too harsh because then you could push somebody away. But you want to be too soft either because they think it's lack of lackadaisical. Be like, no, nah, we have to get this work. Right, I want right. three 15 whole reps. <laughs> 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 I don't want 12. Yeah, oh, no. There's a time and a place. Roz and Alana, if you ever, I'm going to plug Marshawn Lynch. He has uh, <laughs> has a web so It's on Facebook. And I, I, I watched him religiously. Marshawn Lynch is one of my favorite um, uh, athletes. And so he was training his like producers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I tagged both of them because like in the middle of it, he's like rough. I like as a coach in the middle, he's just like down and they got to do like up downs. Yeah. And like, he would just be talking and just say down. And like, it's the most hilarious thing <laughs> in the world. And I used to be like, I tell Roz and Lon, I said, that was y'all without the cussing. <laughs> <laughs> like if you watch, I think it's like episode three of Marshawn Lynch. It's unscripted with Marshawn Lynch. It's That's hilarious. Yeah. That one producer out. He was just, so he had some. He made somebody yes, quit. Yeah. <laughs> like quit. Like dude was like, "Nah, I can't go." Throwing <laughs> up. <laughs> wow. And they weren't dressed for it. They like in jeans and wow. <laughs> like he didn't even care. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, my what I realized this week. Um, you know, uh, Roz, I don't know if you um, know this. If you've listened to the to the show uh, too often, but uh, I'm a huge LeBron James fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, LeBron James just advanced. Him and his team just advanced uh, in the second round of the playoffs. They are officially going to the Eastern Conference Finals, where they will either face Boston, the Boston Celtics, or um, the Philadelphia 76ers. And, um, I mean, LeBron did some pretty amazing stuff in these first two rounds. Um, and so um, I guess what I realized this week is that I think I'm done debating His LeBron greatness. or Jordan? I think, it, it, Roz, you don't, we don't, oh. we don't kick it like this. You don't know, like I, I defend like LeBron's greatness, like I get paid for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm done. I'm <laughs> like through. you, his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm, I'm, I'm through. I think you know people are gonna have their, their perspectives. People mm-hmm. are gonna have their convictions. I have learned throughout this whole process, though, is that. uh you know, um, people romanticize things, um, and they forget a lot, um, as long as it fits their agenda. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They'll forget some things. Um, like, so, like, like lots of times people bring up the fact that, you know, LeBron James, um, and I, and I'll be the first to admit it, he sucked in the Dallas series. He played Dallas one year, uh, the first year in Miami and he stuck up the joint. It was horrible. It was probably the worst um, meltdown you've ever seen from um, I wouldn't even call it a meltdown It was just a ho- oh, horrible He was horrible He was trash He was garbage Okay um, And people bring that up um, You know oftentimes. But those same people who Bring that up to bash LeBron Are the same people who Religiously forget the fact that Michael Jordan never made it out of the first round Of the playoffs without Scottie Pippen 
<laughs> oh, we don't want to talk about that. So, but I realize what I realize is, you know what? I, I, people are going to forget whatever it is they want to forget, sure. as long as it fits their agenda. So, um, I'm just I think I'm done having the argument, Roz. You know what I mean? I think I'm gonna conserve my energy. And I think you you had that right because I mean I'm not I don't know all the facts you know stats I'm a, I respect LeBron I'm I'm not a huge fan like you are, but I feel like Jordan he did have a whole squad a team with him to help him be the great that we see him as. I'm not denying MJ's abilities. I mean like yeah. in my opinion. I still think MJ is the greatest. But, I mean, you can put LeBron up there, but LeBron has had to carry teams. More of a load, maybe? Yes. I think, uh, what's it called? We, Braum tagged me in the other day, uh, or maybe I tagged him, I can't remember, but uh, they were talking to Scotty about it, um, Scotty Pippen, and Scotty said, you know, um, I don't think Scotty was intending to do this, but he kind of he kind of <laughs> proved my point a little bit. He was like uh, – he said LeBron is at, essentially LeBron is asked to do more than Jordan ever did ever did because, you know, I was there to shoulder a lot of that yeah. load as far as being a primary ball handler, as far as, you know, on ninety nine out basis locking up the other team's best player. That was Scottie Pippen doing all that yeah. doing all that. You know what I mean? And so, um but yeah, now I realize it, it I'm not getting paid from it, so I'm not gonna have a conversation no more. <laughs> um, you know, if I'm out, yeah you know I mean, at a cookout or something like, and I ain't doing nothing. I, don't have I was waiting either. on your post from the sweep. I was waiting for you to go live. Yeah, I, I didn't I, go live, man. I just, <laughs> you know, number one team in the East. You know what I mean? He he sweeps them. Uh, you know, they got a better record than Golden State. I mean, he I, at this at this moment, as his roster is currently constructed, I do not believe that he's going to win a championship. If he does, then the conversation is definitely over. If LeBron James eclipses this, and it, my last thing, and I'm done. I promise. People ask, okay, well, you know, how do you know, you know, if if LeBron is better than Jordan, whatever, whatever. I say, look at what it took to stop LeBron. Okay. Took four All Stars. You gotta think about it. Mm, Golden okay. State didn't need Kevin Durant to get to the finals. They got to the finals two years without him. Okay. Two years straight. One one without him. One one without him. Mm -hmm. Caveat though, no Kevin Love, no Kyrie Irving. But they won that one. So they didn't need Kevin Durant to get to the finals. They got to the finals. That's what they need him for. That man in the East. <laughs> him for that <laughs> for that big dog over there. Not nah, talking about, you know what I mean? That's what they need him for. And so, you know, that just speaks to the greatness that is LeBron. It took four All-Stars to kind of. But we're going to bounce back next year. We're going to see what happens, man. But as of right now, I'm done having a conversation. Y'all say what y'all want to say. So He's like, I'm, I'm content with my convictions. <laughs> Roz, what have you realized? Um, I would have to say it's probably already known, but I realized how important self care is. Recently, work has been crazy. You know, I'm just I'm at that point. I'm like, I need a vacation. I can't wait for Memorial Day to come. Ah, <laughs> but. In the midst of all that, though, I'm like, there are times where you just need to, you just need breaks. You just need a minute, an hour, 20 minutes or something just like that. Just to uh, reflect, cool down, take a minute, woosah or something. But it doesn't have to be anything crazy. But I just realized how important self-care is because if you don't, you just, things just keep adding up. Your list just keeps getting longer. And before you know it, you're overwhelmed. So, just take the time just to have time for yourself. Let me ask you this. Because um, you, you talked about, you know, the holistic approach. Mm -hmm. um, do, do, do you think there's... Do you think it's okay for everyone to have a therapist? Like somebody, somebody said that the other day, like, you know, you know, if you have a physical trainer, why not have a therapist? Like people who are already fit or... I feel like healthy. I feel like mental health is very important. Right. So, everybody, everybody has a um, what do you call them? Um, family doctor. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, primary. You don't just yeah. go see the doctor when things are wrong. You're not supposed to, anyways. You know, you're supposed to you know get go your check have, get your checkups and you know you go see the dentist. You don't just go see the dentist when your teeth are falling out. You <laughs> go on a regular basis. Same your thing preventative the, care. Yeah. yeah. So why 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 do you think therapy isn't looked at? 
in the same regard, I wonder. The stigma that comes with it. Yeah. Their therapist equals crazy. Ah. Uh, and I think that's the whole whole thing. You have to get by that because it's sometimes you may not even have issues. It's just you need somebody to talk to that will either give you some feedback that isn't doesn't come from somebody you know who may have a bias already. So if if we cool and we know each other and you already know my tendencies, you may already favor that. But if you were a real friend, you'd be like, look, you would give it to me straight. But sometimes people may not have that foundation around them who yeah. would give it to them straight. Whereas a stranger, I mean, you would hold that your circle around you would give it to you straight. But sometimes a stranger just be like, Look, this is here's some coping mechanisms. Here's some strong research behind it. These are things that have been proven that we can do for you. So I'm all for it, even if it's low key. I wish it was a preventative thing that insurance is covered, just like when we get annual physicals. You just go see a therapist once a year just to make sure everything is in tune. Because I think it's like 26 people who are schizophrenic. Their symptoms don't even show up to like mid to late twenties. Oh wow! Yeah, so stuff like that. Like if you, not to go too extreme, but if you've been hearing voices or seeing things, some people just play it off. They may not think that's too attentive to go see, or I mean, like ah, oh, maybe it's just I'm just stressed. Well, if you're stressed and you're still having symptoms like that, I mean, that's probably a cue you need to just go to your doctor one. Yeah, and they can refer you on, but. I you feel think, like mental health is is just swept under the rug. I, I I would agree with you that there's a stigma that goes uh, into that. But do you think the stigma is even like more so amplified when it comes to black people? Yeah. And I don't. I say yeah, but I don't. I don't have a good reason why. Well, I think one reason why is because. And I and I love the Lord, but we want to pray about everything. Yeah. And we say, cast all your cares to the Lord. Yeah. I'm I totally believe that, but sometimes <laughs> He the, is my counselor. I was about to say sometimes uh, <laughs> I don't need no therapist. <laughs> sometimes you do. God got me. <laughs> he do say got yeah. you. He do got you, and he's probably telling you to go see somebody. Right, right, right. <laughs> and right. You ignore that. Exactly. You see what you want to see. Exactly. That's that's not having he discernment. Got me when I was out of my mind, we'll like really admit to like. <laughs> <laughs> so you were you were legit out of your mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and how'd you get through that? I just pushed through. <laughs> no, you need to go You're see still somebody. Dealing with that. <laughs> yeah. still dealing. No, I think it, it might be. Like more uh, ecological, um, like people with money, I guess. Ecological, uh, economic, economical, there, there we go. ecological, <laughs> ecological, like yeah, that's, that's, the, that's ecosystem. the world, that's the like the atmosphere, that's. that's, the, that's the, the, I was thinking eco, echo. <laughs> I was, I was around there. All right. <laughs> economical. There you go. Okay. Um, that. Um, made me lose my whole train of thought. Um, no, it's um that like rich issue. people. Yeah, it's yeah. a money issue. Like it's not cheap. It's not, and you know that most insurances don't cover it. Um, and then it's like by the hour. You know, your doctor yeah. visit is. You know, if you in there three hours, four hours, got time it's for just that. The <laughs> yeah, it's the copay. They hit you with a bill later. Oh, they want that money up front yeah. for. But that's why I feel like screens are necessary. If you just screen somebody and they do happen to have a mental issue, then insurance will kick in. Like, just like with anything, if you go through a, I don't know if it's going to change, but over the past four years, they had like a list of preventative measures that were automatically covered. Like if you were male over 40 for prostate cancer, you were getting oh, your yeah. for free. Females over 40, their breast exam were free. So, especially if you have a history, you can even get in earlier. So, I'm seeing if somebody has a history, a family history of mental illness, like, that, I feel like that should be something that's proactive. And I don't know why that isn't, but I just... I think, I think so, as it relates to um, black people in, in mental health, um, I think that for so long, 
we have had to uh, shove so much inside, like just to like make it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's crazy how how you inherit. You know what I mean? Even certain habits and things of that nature. It's like you know, there wasn't. <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, I got to. There wasn't a uh, uh, a med check on the plantation. You know what I mean? Like, no, and it just wasn't. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, tough it out. Get through yeah. it. Like, you trying to live or what? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you trying to live? Okay, well, tough it. Tough mm-hmm. it up. Stuff that in there. Don't let nobody see you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, and, you know, that, that whole uh, culture continued to perpetuate itself. And, um, we're here today and we're in that, we're in that same situation. Like where, you know, um, me being open, me being honest, you know, um, one, does, does anybody really care? That's the, mm-hmm. that's the first thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? And will I be believed? You know True. what I mean? Um, and two, it's like, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to come off as weak, you know? Um, I'm not trying to come off as weak. So I think, I think it's a lot of reasons why, I think I think the stigma is even doubled, yeah. tripled, quadrupled when it comes to um, the black folk, and then like you said, the religious pieces. And even when you just said how it how you come off, like even if you are to open up and to express to somebody, they probably don't even know how to respond, right? Because it's like, oh, whoa, yeah. You talking about emotions, uh, yeah, feelings? You better, you better, what are those? Keep that shit in, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> especially as a black male, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, because I saw a post. It was, I think it was on Instagram or something. It talked about how uh, you should allow uh, young men to express themselves, and if they cry, don't like push it under. Don't don't just be like, okay, shut it up, shut that down right now. You should yeah. allow them to express it, address it, and then it went on. I read the comments, and they were just. You know how Instagram comments can go, but <laughs> I just thought, thought that was interesting. Like if, yeah, you can have teaching moments, but if something brings somebody, regardless if it's male or female, brings them to an emotional state, whether it's anger, tears, I feel like you should allow them to have that moment. Yeah. And then you Black can. Black got patience like that in yeah. general. Then you can teach from it. <laughs> it's like, okay, if you, if somebody stubbed your toe and you having a dramatic breakdown or something like that then okay you need to you just stubbed your toe yeah. that is nothing but if it's something like legit hurt like i like you can't explain it sometimes or anger like when i get really mad when somebody push me to my edge i don't i can't find words i will legit just go into an ugly cry and i'm like why are you crying it's like because i can't find the words yeah because if i if I can't find the words, I probably will hit you, and I don't want to hit you because then you're going to, <laughs> like then we fighting, and that's a whole other thing. But like some people don't know how to comp- compartmentalize things, so that's just their go to. But I feel like again, you just go back to el- education. Okay, so you felt this way. What made you feel this way? How in the future, if you don't want to come off as weak or show your emotions, here are some things you can do. Here are some coping mechanisms. Remove yourself from the situation. Here are ways to express yourself to get those feelings out. I mean, those are just, again, just. Is it a pride thing too? Like, we ain't nothing wrong with me. It's I'm okay. I can shake it off. I can deal with it. I think I think that's it. But then also too, I think that, and I was I wasn't gonna go out because I wasn't I didn't want to make this the mental health episode. <laughs> but uh, I think we as black people have somewhat to an extent become immune to trauma mm. um you know uh immune to it in the sense that it doesn't affect us the way that it affects uh other 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 people uh and the, the reason why i would say that is because you know um think about our encounters with law enforcement you know what i mean um think about you know um the uh the the, the neighborhoods that a lot of us grow up in you know what i mean um Think about, you know, um, the music that we listen to and, you know what I mean? Oh, we're desensitized. Even, even, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Desensitized, yeah. immune, whatever, or however you want to yeah, call no, it. No. I mean, I, well, maybe not immune because immune means it, it has no effect. I think it does have an effect, but we're just, you know what I'm saying? Like when I see 
Like, cause there's certain diseases like that can you you can be infected, and you there's no there no no symptoms, uh, you know, materialize out of it. It's, but that doesn't mean that it's you're just not. Just lays dormant in your yeah, body. Yeah, exactly. Trauma stays dormant in the <laughs> in the black body, uh, <laughs> which is crazy. And I, mean, I think yeah. it's just seeing it. I think we when we go through trauma, we internalize it and it, it deals with us. But us seeing it, mm-hmm. I was like, when I see the. I'll say the Starbucks thing. I'm like, yeah, that, that has happened to me. Like, what's the uproar now? Like, yeah. I know about 20 brothers this went through. <laughs> <laughs> Why we care now? Why, yeah. well, you know, this has been happening. It's day, <laughs> <shouting. Yeah. laughs> So I think it that does. Like, I'm like, Starbucks, you ain't got to do. To me, Starbucks didn't have to do all they did. Deal with the employee. And, yeah. Like, the dudes <laughs> were even like that. They were like, hey. Give us a dollar settlement and two hundred fifty towards this. Yeah, like they ain't, they ain't benefit from because they like, hey, this happens. Like right. this, this is what we go through. Thank you for sharing the some looks, money. the looks that you get. Even like when you, I mean, I, I went to a, a predominantly white Christian university, and uh, you know, when you're able to articulate, you know, what I mean yourself very well. The looks that you get, you know what I mean? <laughs> when you're polite, you open up doors and, you know, um, you you just you show manners. Like, they, what? Like, really? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, all these things kind of play a role in, like, you know what I mean? The, the black experience, I guess. So, but I do think that we are quick to, you know, call folk, folk crazy. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, our dear brother. We're going to take a moment and pray for our dear brother. <laughs> Uh, Brother Kanye West Uh, Heavenly Father uh, We are gathered here today (laughs) Asking that you (laughs) Nah man what's up with Kanye Ross? I don't know I had to ask a friend that question He is like the biggest Kanye fan ever and I had and I sent him a text. I was like, Kanye so, fans are hard to find these days. I was like, <laughs> they're dropping by the dozen. <laughs> but I think he's still in it to, till till old Kanye come back, which I'll never know if that's gonna happen. But, um, and basically all he said, he's like, this is a conversation that needs to happen in person. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> he got offended. Like he's like. Let, no, we're not going. We're not going there today. <laughs> he's, 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 he's like, no. He's like, this can't happen over text. This has to be. A... I was wow. like, wow. I was like, this... I was like, I was like, this is gonna be deep. I'm like, I'm gonna just listen because I'm not too involved with social media. So honestly, I was probably about three, four days late with the hashtag slavery was a choice. And when I saw it, I was like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> And then when I saw the backstory, I was like, oh, my gosh, Kanye, what you doing? <laughs> like, where did this come from? I'm like, I'm all for your opinions with politics and whatever you want to. thinking? Yeah, whatever you want to do, whatever you call it. That's you. But, like, he just has a platform where he can do so much that I, 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 like, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I just don't know when it comes to him. I think that, uh. Yeah, I, I I think, and this is not me joking. I, I I sincerely believe that he's he's going through some things. Man, I, I don't mm-hmm. think that he is. I don't think that he's necessarily right um, in the mind. Um, you know. Um, yeah, I I just think he, I think he's I think he's going through a lot now. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, I know that <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, happens to be here tonight. I was like, wow, you know what I mean? <laughs> Rome uh, agrees with the comment: slavery was a choice. I think what aspect of slavery is a choice? Um, I think um, mental yeah, slavery. Yeah, yeah break. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, no. I need to hear this. I want to nah, hear this. No, no, no. about what Kanye talked about. I'm well, no, to... no, because it was our interpretation of what he was saying. He just said he I was talking about the institution. The slave. You said. He specifically said he, he referenced four hundred years. He said, yeah, you, but to me, and years. I gave somebody this reference because somebody hit me. Well, he said four hundred years. I said technically slavery slavery was like in the fifteen hundreds. Four hundred years is nineteen hundred. Slavery was abolished in the eighteens. So four, where are you getting the four hundred years? And this is where I. Nah, it was, it was before fifteen. Do you? Do you? What? what, what where, where you start? What's your starting point? 
Correct. Where's the starting point of slavery? Because we could go back We're to... We're talking about on this soil. It, was, it wasn't until... When did uh, Columbus discover yeah, America? There we go. Well, I'm talking about even... I'm talking about... I'm even, I'm even referencing, not necessarily... Um, you know what? What, it, what we know as the United States of America. I'm, I'm even talking about because you know America is Mexico all the way up into or North America is Mexico all the way up into Canada, Canada yeah. right? So just in case a lot of people don't know this, I didn't realize this until you know later on. Uh, Mexicans get mad offended by like the term America. Americans, like we're Americans, because mm. they're like, yo, like no, we're Americans too, like you know what I mean, we're part of this country. Anyways, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> uh, the Caribbean and places like so, I'm not talking about when Columbus got to the United States, what we now know as the United States of, Amer- of America. I'm talking about when, yeah, you know I mean, the Spanish hit the Caribbean. Yeah, you know I mean, mm. um, that's I, I believe that's that's your interpretation, or that, no, I mean, that's that's that's, that's the part that's of the 400. The ref- that's where the 400 comes from. Is what I'm saying. Because to me, we're still to me, this is it. Without all of that, we're still modern day slaves. Who is we? We people in general. It's it's slaves in Africa what, right now. Pete, was Kanye talking about my interpretation people was in general? My interpretation was mental slavery. Is everything he's talking about is free thinking, which is mental. <laughs> but people don't give. Wrong. No, listen. Man, wearing it, a "Make America Great Again" hat. It's, it's a black and white conversation, wrong. He's not talking about the mind. I think he's so. so this is. I'm gonna give you this aspect. Killmonger in the movie Black Panther said, "Bury me with my ancestors who thought death was better than bondage." So. You be die or be a slave is a choice. Correct or not. When he said that, everybody's fist in the air, hand pumping. Yeah. Kanye said different terminology, less politically correct, and now it's not a choice. But people jumped off the boats not to be slaves. People fought back. Nat Turner fought back not to be a slave. Yeah, but my, my question is... I, I, well, first of all, I believe Nat Turner believed he was a martyr, so he knew what he was. He, he knew what he because he doing. knew he he knew what he was getting into. But what I'm saying is, at, at the same time, I don't I don't know if I mean calling death a choice, like you know what I'm saying, like it's a choice. Nah, man, I mean because and, and the reason the reason why I say this, it's not a good outlook. It's choosing lesser two evils, but at the end of the day, it's a choice. Like yeah, nah, I'm not because I'm not, people not. who ran, guess what the penalty was nine times out of ten, death. Yeah. I wouldn't say nine times out of ten. They cut your foot off. You gonna work though. Nine times out of ten. Nah. <laughs> nine times out of ten. That's a piece of property. You're not about to just destroy a piece of property. You're gonna make it to where it don't run again. Yeah. You <laughs> cut your foot off. You're gonna get over here and need some dough or something. You know what I'm saying? You gonna figure something out. No, I mean, this is I, I learned this a long time ago. What we what they didn't beat slaves as we as we like to perceive. They didn't they Cause like you just said, they was a piece of property. They made examples out of few, a few, but like everybody got beat all the time. It wasn't like that. Yeah, because a lot of them didn't want to get beat, so they <laughs> did what they were supposed to. Do. Like whatever I gotta do not to get beat or die, I'm going to do that. Why? Because I care about my son. I care about my cousin. I care about Aunt Millie. Like you know what I'm saying, I'm not about to put myself in a situation where I'm. That's this is gonna be stripped from me. No, it's like it's and, and then I and then I would make the argument you you know people want to talk about you know being slaves of, of the mind. Imagine how much free thinking you got to have to physically be enslaved and get up every day and and live your life. Imagine imagine what what, what that what, what you know how much of a free thinker you had to be when you weren't picking cotton or when you weren't doing something that you know what I mean you were forced to do. You know what I mean because you're getting up every day. Yeah, you know I mean, doing something that you that you don't want to do. Yeah, you know I mean, you're for so imagine the imagination you got to have in order to make it through every single day. I, it's so so what I'm saying is this whole free thinking thing. It's just it's a cop out for him to be ignorant. That's what it is. I, he lives in a bubble because um, he had an interview with or Ti had an interview on the Breakfast Club, and Ti said he actually sat down, met with him, yeah. and he said he asked him about some of his policies, and Kanye just didn't know it. He didn't know. He said, no. Nah. Trump's policy? Yeah, he didn't know some of Trump's policy. And so he lives in this bubble where he didn't. So that's where I think he's wrong because his um 
his platform is so big. Yeah. If he's not informed of what he's doing, endorsing, endorsing, he he, he it touches too many people yeah. for him not to have the knowledge and put that in. But I think his how he said it is wrong. But I think we're still slaves currently. Like people go to work every day. That's something they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. They hate their job. They get up. We're all slaves to money. I was just about to say that. Like, I was listening to me, to KOD on like he way. has got to the point where Kanye is not a slave to money. Like, and his st- stinky whips, uh, us, his consumer, we're slaves to money. And I think, and that's where I think his free thinking is mental. His what he's saying is choice of slavery is mental. Like I think it's more mental, not physical. Because guess what? You like you say, nobody wanted to be a slave, but they were scared to do otherwise. And but at a point in slavery, it's the slave mentality. Say, hey, this is what I do. Like you, at some point, somebody didn't know anything but it, but to be a slave. So if you all you know is your purpose was to be the slave, you. We all seen the quote by now that Harriet told me, say, I freed a thousand slaves and I could have freed a thousand more if they knew they were slaves. People say that statement ain't true. I don't know one there. Don't know where the quote came from. But I think that's true because I'm a big entrepreneur, but I could go talk to somebody being an entrepreneur and they have no idea what I'm talking about being an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, be owning your own. They always think, well, I'm going to get this great job, work for this great company. I'm going to work 40 years at the same place and make all this money and I'm going to retire. That's what how people think. To me, that's slave mentality. You don't go work for somebody else. You make them millions while they pay you thousands. And uh, I, 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 I somewhat agree. But then at the same time, too, though, it's like uh, you're you're you are you are voluntarily. Uh, leaving out some of the benefits of being a worker. Responsibility. Yeah, this is somebody else's company, right? Um, but if something go wrong, i.e. Starbucks, <laughs> I don't have to take the fall. I'm not taking the fall. They had, all they did with her was the woman, they just relocated her. Yep. Who took the biggest hit? The CEO had to come from behind his death. Like, you know what I'm saying? So there are benefits to being a worker. Now, I, I going say, saying that, you know, someone working, uh, it, this is reminding me of the Dame Dash interview on oh. on The Breakfast Club where he just said, you know, everybody should be their own boss. It's not it, possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. And so for me, um, my number one goal is not money. My number one goal is provision. Now, I know I need money to provide for my family, but money is not my number one goal. My number one goal is seeing my kids happy, seeing my wife happy. Um, you know, and that is, you know, making sure there's a roof over their head, make sure they got clothes on their back, making sure their bellies are full. Those are what those are the things that drive me, and it just so happens that, you know, I go out and I collect a check in order to make sure that that happens, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, I don't know. I just I think that <clears throat> Just because someone is working a job or works for a company, I don't believe that automatically implies that they are, you know, that it's that they they are uh, under a slave mentality. I think if your objective is money, is what I say, you're a slave because you want money. You want the big house. You want you want to want the new Bentley. You want you want all these things that you necessarily don't need. Yeah. Because guess what? We all can live in a smaller house. We can all drive a less new car. New car? If your car go down, get a new car. Yeah. But we, before your car get old, people like to get a new car <laughs> by no choice. <laughs> you say, oh, I outgrew my house. You not getting no bigger. <laughs> like, you know, I got too much stuff. I outgrew my house because I got too much. What stuff? The people in your house is what matter. Now, if you got a family of two and you grow to five, you outgrew it. But people move houses or leave houses because they got they accumulated too much stuff that they so bought with money. So because I like nice things and I'm willing to work for nice things, I have a slave mentality. Why do you want nice things? What? I why? like nice things. But why is nice or material things? I like things? tech. Like, friends, I'm a, I'm a huge tech guy. I love okay. cool tech. Mm-hmm. So somebody who loves cool tech, 
and they are working a job, you know what I mean, in order to get the things that they like, they they, they have a slave mentality? Okay, I'm going to play devil advocate because you do you well know. at this. You do well at it. So it's my turn today. <laughs> so if I'm a crackhead and I work jobs for crack, am I not addicted to crack? No, it's not the same thing. Why you know? not? You it's like nice things. Because, because you're making a blanket statement. You're saying, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, Roz. I'm trying to just take it off. <laughs> yeah, I was both sides. I but see you're both saying sides, that, though. you know, people who work for things that they don't necessarily need, you know what I mean? And they go and they, you know, work for a company or whatever, they automatically are underneath some type of slave mentality. I'm saying it. Explain to me how that is. I mean, I, I, I like things. People like crack. Yeah, but and they do things. What's the, what, you don't, you're not, you're not buying, you're not buying crack because you like it. You're buying it because you, because you're addicted to like you need it. Your body's telling you that you need it. But I feel like, money I feel can like, be addicted too because I mean, in you, order it's to such get thing the as materialism, like, it's materialism. Yeah, is a is a disease. No, no, fact, fact though. But what I'm saying is, that's not about to kill me though. Like crack is gonna kill you. I mean, so that's why that's why you. I don't I don't know if but you what you do in order to get that money could kill you. Because you, all, but, you just said your goal Romans, was provision. Wonder if you lost your job, how were you going to get money to provide? Though, would you do anything necessary for my family? Probably so. Yes. And wonder if that was like life or death, though. So, 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 with 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 this mentality, everybody is under slave mentality. There's not there's not a person on earth who doesn't want to be able to obtain. Let's let's forget the wants, the basic necessities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's not a, I don't believe that there, most people would do anything in order to do that. We're all slaves to what life? It's, it's, it's just a, that that whole concept to me is just ignorant. You know what <laughs> I mean? I, I just I don't because I know people been saying it for the longest. It's like okay, I like nice things. I like to be able to purchase things. I like to be able to do stuff. Uh, okay, and because I'm doing that, that makes me a slave. I would say more. You you kind of changed my opinion. It's more that it's you will go in debt to get what you need, and debt is always bad when you want stuff that you really don't own. Yeah, when it's past necessity. Yeah. It's past necessity. Yeah, like because I think everything you can do is a necessity. Like my dream life, I live off the grid. Like live off the grid. Like live in the country somewhere. I like people too much. I can go visit people, but I will live <laughs> off the grid. Like, like I look into. But they the, can't come visit you. Yeah, you come. Just oh, know okay. you just. just it ain't no be like modern necessities. <laughs> like when I build my house, I. Rome, will, you're not hunting every day. Oh no, no, I go to the grocery oh, store. Okay. Oh, I'm like, I go to grocery store. Off the grid. It, it's off the grid. If so you this going is up to low bills every day. If you know I what this is what listen to me. So Tesla makes. He off the grid, but I see him at Kroger seven a.m. every. <laughs> That's off the grid. Hey, well, uh, y'all got the uh, boar's head. Uh, like, well, the Wild Wild West, they had the general I, store. Everything you can't my, do yourself. I they my, traded and bartered. I want my deli slice, please. Oh my get the, uh, <laughs> see? see how he played devil advocate? <laughs> like, Roger so, ain't here today. Roger, you, he makes some fire wings. Where Roger at? In the deli. <laughs> that could be off the grid. <laughs> I mean, so, <laughs> Tesla makes a, a battery for your house. Mm -hmm. It's basically as big as your... Um, Breaker box. Oh wow! Yes, and it <laughs> and yes. it recharges. You can either use your energy that your house uses already, or, or you can or solar. solar. And if you use solar, guess what you don't need? Electricity. Electricity from the company. It and so it re yeah. regenerates and it can power your whole house. Two of them can power like a three thousand square feet house. Hmm. And you. That's to me. That's off grid. What happens when it fails, Rome? Rome. Then you got to make a phone call. You got to have them come out. <laughs> <laughs> the maintenance man got to come out there. And Listen, <laughs> when your power out is down, you just be sitting there like do do do. And they call. They be like, due to the power outages in the area, the wait times are very long. <laughs> like we've been there. So the same thing that can happen. You paying somebody for. I'd rather pay one time and deal with the consequences there. And it's off the grid to me. Like. If I get, I can't go well water, but I would. I like, <laughs> I buy bottled water, but I would I like my to, ice mountain. Yeah, <laughs> seven thirty every morning. Oh my goodness! Hey man, Roger normally put this in my van for me. I don't know. What's up. <laughs> like so, I would like to live where I don't have like 
monthly reoccurring bills. Um, like I, I'm okay with grocery shopping. I'm okay with cooking every day. I'm I just that reoccurring bill is hard to get debt free when you have reoccurring things that technically they have a alternative. We don't think about the alternative. Like you did not know, and it's like five years old on this battery. No, I didn't. I didn't I did, know that I, at I all. did not know. I just know the solar power panels on top of people's roofs. That's about yeah, it. But you can, it's literally as big as a breaker box. You can plug it, go buy your breaker box, plug everything into that. So you just buy the battery one time payment. All yeah, right. It's like some, some money. I, it's gonna be, I know that. But, but if I build a house, I'm going to make sure I get two of those bad okay. boys. One to back up the other. And then it's powered by, it can be powered by solar energy it, or you just charge it back. They, you can charge it with your uh, your electricity company. So IPL, Anderson, utility. So that will be one bill though? That's what I'm just trying to. No, if you do solar power, it's just one bill. Okay. But if you get your company, but your bill will go down because it's not constantly yeah. running everything else. It's just charging that at night. Uh, I see what you're saying now. Well, listen, um, I'm still going to pray for Kanye. Um. <laughs> I'm just saying, we we just really need to have a conversation with Kanye to see what, what he was talking about. It's too late now. Yeah, Kanye's had multiple conversations. No one knows what he's talking about. Not only has he had multiple conversations. Multiple people have talked to Kanye. Ebro talked to Kanye. T.I. talked to Kanye. Charlamagne did a whole hour and a half interview with Kanye. But the, the Kanye Charlamagne was before. That, that was before yeah, the no, whole yeah, facts. But even then, you don't walk away from that interview with more, uh, you know, uh, clarity. You know what I mean? You <laughs> walk away just as confused as you were before you started. Here's the facts. It goes back to that be- what we talked about at the beginning, the whole mental health thing. Mm-hmm. I said this last episode... Kanye, I believe, and I could be wrong, I ain't got no degree in none of this stuff, but I would look and I would say, it seems to me Kanye never dealt with the fact that his mom passed. And I heard that podcast, and I was, I agree to some extent. I just feel like, you know what I mean, you got a lot of money, you can ignore a lot of immediate problems when you have yeah. a lot of money. And um, this man out here getting liposuction because he thinks that we don't want to see him, you know, but we Big Kanye like, always been vain. He's always he got lipo? Yeah, he said oh, in his yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said I got lipo sex I got addicted to opioids. Uh, like, wait, he got lipo? Yeah. He, he said he's still addicted to it right now. I ask him, hey, why you let Kanye get what? lipo? <laughs> this is not a conversation that we need to have via text. We need to be face to face. Oh my Kanye goodness. got lipo suction out here. Yeah. Yeah. Lips, man. <laughs> Uh huh. So okay. So so you have Kanye doing his free thinking thing, thing, and then uh, my man Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino, um, just dropped um, "This Is America," uh, which is a uh, a song. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, um, I'm not at all impressed with the song. Really, now and I'll be real. After one listen, I'm not impressed with the song. No, but the visual is a whole different. That's a whole different thing. Um, I think if had I heard that song minus the visual, I would have threw it away. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but the, the the visual, and this is very rare that this happens, but the visual made the song. You know, um, I think, and I know I'm trying to, I, I don't want to segue too much, but I think the only other time I can say that the visual was just as impactful or more impactful than the song, I can think of right now if I'm just off the cuff, Thriller. Thriller by itself. Like, imagine if there was never a video to Thriller. It wouldn't be as big. Yeah. It wouldn't be as big. It's just a Halloween song. Yeah, for it's, me. it's just like a what? Like what yeah. movie was this for? Yeah. You know what I mean? But then you the video, like I ain't gonna lie, that that caused trauma in my life as a kid. <laughs> At the very end, you know what I'm saying? When he turned around, I was like, ha, 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 no, uh, uh-uh, don't do it. Um, you know. Uh, but anyway, so Donald Glover drops this bad boy. Uh, Roz, what are your thoughts? So again, I was late to the video. <laughs> Roz right. lives in a bubble. It sounds yeah, like no, but she showed up on time at the gym, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I because I was reading some. Did the video just like because I know he's on SNL Tuesday, Saturday? I think it was uh, no, not, not Tuesday, Friday. I'm like that. Okay, then I'm not that over the weekend. weekend. No, okay. you're 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 on time. Maybe it was okay, Saturday. okay. Maybe it was Saturday. So this I know he was on it. SNL. He it was after all the song. Kanye stuff. Okay, I, his timing is impeccable. That's, like I feel like he yeah. went to the studio like. I gotta do something to uplift us after Kanye. Uh-huh. 
Like it looked like they shot it. Go ahead, Ross. I was gonna cut you off. No, but I agree with him. the The song itself, if I was to hear that on the radio, I would have been like, "Okay, it's just it's a song. The beat goes." But I'm more of a lyric person. I really haven't listened to the lyrics yet because I've been so me either in engulfed in the video itself. So the video, I'm still trying to just analyze and get into all of that but I had to read an article to really understand the video because at first I just watched it just to see what I could see. And you see. got distracted by the dancing like everybody else. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, honestly, I was I think I was watching it too hard trying to figure out everything because I saw, you know, he opens up the guitar player shoots him in the head. I'm like, well, why did you do that? What was the meaning behind? Like, I'm so analytical. I'm like, okay, so why did he shoot him? And then why are you? I was like, why are you walking around without a t-shirt on? Is this supposed to be some? Like, I was just trying to. Say so you look like a young Ronald Isley. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was doing too much thinking. So la la la. I went back and watched it, and then I saw an article came out about it, and the article pointed some things out to me like what I was telling before we started talking but uh, his comparison to Jim Crow they put like a side by side with yeah. the, there was like one pose that he yeah. did and it when was, he was shooting the guy yeah that and then um, of course when the, the uh, machine gun with the choir that took me back to that incident uh, with the, the church. church and then what really got me was when they did a pan of like an upper level of the warehouse and it was just people watching like we're phone. in that social media age where we will not say anything something could be going on but we will definitely get our phones out to record capture it, the to moment. capture the moment but won't verbalize won't be able to verbalize it without that type of be like oh look, i don't believe you words don't carry any oomph anymore that's going off topic, but yeah, that, those are the few things that stood out to me. But again, if I probably if I watch it again, I'll probably see so much more. Um, I'm a Childish Gambino fan. Uh, his hip hop, his movie, everything he does. Um, and so I feel like this song without the video was not as catchy as Redbone. Mm -hmm. Like Redbone is catchy, it's yeah. poppy. It's you you feel it. It's not poppy. Redbone? Redbone's not popping. It, it, let me say this. More mainstream sound. Uh, I think it's more like... Main, mm. Nah, it's very retro. That that was the allure. Yeah. That's straight boosty Collins. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So Which we're, is we're, funk and... Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. To, but, but, no, but and the reason why I say you can't call it pop or mainstream is because you can you literally can't compare it to anything. Currently, I yeah. feel like I feel like for something to be pop... You know what I'm saying? You'll be able, be able to, to fit. yeah, or mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Mainstream, <laughs> man. I, I feel like mainstream cheapens it. It was bigger than that, and, and so people didn't listen to the words of that song. Yeah, they they like what they heard, but they didn't listen to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And so this one, you have and like that song, you gotta listen to the lyrics. It's what, not as pause. Was there a video to Redbone? I don't think. I don't. I don't I recall it, one. I don't. I think it was all, if anything, it were visual videos. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And so I think they're on the same realm of lyrics. You have to really listen to yeah. get what he's saying. And people to this day still don't know what Redbone was talking about. They just be like, oh, like they like it. Break it down. I mean, I, I got bits and pieces, but. I mean, I can't break it down today. We're not talking about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I just like that one. Just stay woke. It was creeping like that took me back because sometimes I I call it my trap analytics analytics of Sunday sermons like I don't know I can't go into all the details I go to my journal for notes but there was one sermon where it talked about like watch your circle snakes in the grass and my mind went to Redbone I was like why in the world am I thinking about Redbone <laughs> in <laughs> church yeah 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 <laughs> you talk but I went to the lyrics and I read them and that one line just stood out to me it was like I was like okay child this okay, <laughs> you've been singing and didn't know I was like okay y'all y'all okay but yeah and so um I think that uh, this these lyrics has that same impact I probably listened to about four times a day mm -hmm. trying to dissect I haven't looked at the lyric because he his tone and how he says stuff is kind of hard at yeah. first listens 
to grasp it all. I've um, only listened and seen it once. Um, I haven't given it a second, yeah. second look. But I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, it's definitely captivating. No one was anticipating that shot. Uh, threw everybody off. Um, I <laughs> actually seen a couple reactions, like the people, like older people watching the video, and their reactions, like <laughs> deer in headlights when that you know sh- that, that the gunshot went off. Uh, the opening, yeah. Um, and so I think my biggest takeaway from it, takeaway from it was, um, there's, I mean, obviously there's so many things you can get, but right now, just have one look, one listen, I got things are not always what they seem. So in the very beginning, the very, very opening, the guy's playing the guitar and, and so I, I, I do video. Um, video work and um, so I'm always peeping out the cinematography of, of, of things and so it was all one motion one cam, one cut one like one one, one take <laughs> of them capturing the guy playing mm-hmm. the uh, guitar and then um, Donald Glover was perfectly positioned uh, adjacent to this pole and all it took was a little bit of a tilt from the camera and then he's revealed with his back, you know what I mean, to okay. the camera. The ve- Like, literally, the very first time you see him, he was there the entire time. It's just you didn't have the Angle. correct perspective. Yeah. So, boom, it goes back to perspective being mm-hmm. key. You know what I mean? Um, and so, um, which, which, which is why I'm kind of, you know, reserved. I don't, I, I'm trying to bring it back. But I'm kind of, you know, reserving... The ultimate judgment I guess on the whole Kanye piece because of perspective like you know what I'm saying like I want to see this thing all the way through I want to hear what I, I, I'm going to listen to the album uh, to Kanye's album yeah. I'm going to check it out because maybe maybe this was all just an okie doke you know what I'm saying I don't know I don't know if I want to listen to it I, I don't I mean not you because you agree come not, on now no but go, not with what he said the album that says <laughs> slavery was that's the name of the album did you know Slavery was a choice. Wrong will be the first oh person. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't try to get it on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's slavery mental, was sla- a choice, mental huh? slavery is yeah, my output. Yeah, there you go. That's what I say. You gonna arrive in a uh, Abraham Lincoln top hat? Yeah, slavery <laughs> oh was a choice. God. Oh man! I saw this meme today, and it was like, "If slavery was a choice," and it had Kanye's face whited out. Oh yeah, like bleached. <laughs> Yeah, well. it's the, the like the phone calls when they be like, "Hey, hey, massa, I, I really not feeling good today. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna be able to slave today. I, I, I might be back tomorrow." Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, "What are oh, these?" Man. So he he created like Twitter frenzy, which is hilarious for me. But I just think people gotta it's mental and maybe it's thought provoking. I don't know what he was trying to do. I, like I said, I don't think physical slavery was a you, choice. Do you follow uh, Travis Gambino? Like you follow his his happenings? Yeah, for the most part. I've been told that this is supposed to be his last project. It he's... could be because he's 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 growing fast. Oh, I, I can't even say he's growing really fast. He just has a lot. Go- he got his hands in a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say no. He he has what Solo, Star Wars. He's yeah, yeah he's in that. Um, I think they don't do another spinoff where he's the main character in one of the Star Wars movies. He got Lion King coming up. He and Lion King. What's going on with Lion King? They doing a live action Lion King. Isn't he Simba? He's Simba. It's supposed to be like Beyonce in there. It's a lot. Yeah. They got everybody. Is that confirmed or y'all? It's just, confirmed. It's black, black Twitter just got y'all hype. No, I, it's no, confirmed. Yeah. Y'all, <laughs> hey, but Black Twitter been promising this Richard Pryor biopic for like twenty years, and it ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to. Who else supposed to be in this thing? He just better have a a a. a, a I think a they part. got a James Earl back. Mm-hmm. He uh, did, eh? No. Huh. He's still He's still kicking it. James Earl Jones. Yeah. Go, do I, your Google. I didn't hear. Yeah, I didn't hear. I, no. Yeah, do your Google. So I'm I'm, do my Google. Do them real quick. For sure. I'm I think they got like people who were in the original. They reprising yeah. theirs. Like Whoopi still won the hyenas. Yeah. 
Um, I, I, yeah, I, man, I'm gonna look up the whole Lion King. Yeah. Cast. Well, listen, man, I'm not saying. All, all, all I'm saying is this. Uh, it's been happening for years. It's stuff yeah. that's been. Um, James Earl might be alive. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See. Uh. Yeah. I, yeah, he's he's alive. Is, well, at least that's what the Google is saying. <laughs> the Google is saying he's alive. Uh, that'd be interesting. So uh, th- we're not they're not using animals anymore. I think it's gonna be like um yeah I think they it's gonna be like uh the Jungle Book where they use like oh so it's still voiceovers it's still voice but it's live it's, action yeah. it's not cartoon it's no, not cartoon oh yeah no, no, no. CGI I, I'm, yeah. I'm here for that I'm yeah, here yeah. for all that yeah. uh, that's what's up. So, Beyonce playing Nala, Donald Glover Simba, James Earl Jones Mufasa. Uh, I don't know how to Di- do it. This is from a Di- like Disney confirm this. It's, it's coming out summer 2019. Who yeah. who scar? Uh, I, I was about to, I was getting to that. Oh, uh, was it, uh, uh, Terrence? No. Terrence, Terrence Howard. Howard. <laughs> what? Hey, Simba, man. <laughs> he played the I, same I, guy. Oh every my time. god. Take it's a uh, I don't man. I don't. <laughs> I can't say his name, but I he was he he was a bad guy in uh, Four Brothers. Uh, oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay. He should show what up. Twelve years slave. That guy, okay. yes. Um, Alfred Wood up playing should, so it Robbie. Should've, it should have been uh, Samuel though. <laughs> you mm. motherfucker, <laughs> Samuel. Uh, I can see him. I can see him. Did he get my guy uh, apart? Oh. Uh. Dude, this is crazy. They ain't get Morgan Freeman part. Mm-mm. He couldn't be the monkey. Yeah, I was about to say he could have been the no, monkey. John Connie is the, the original. No, uh, I don't know. No, he wasn't the original. Um, but he's the Chachaka, the daddy from Black Panther. Nah, he ain't good enough. That should have oh. been Morgan Freeman. Yeah. You can't have an all star and then not have Morgan Freeman. I never right. heard Morgan Freeman do an accent. He don't even need no accent. You do need an accent to be in Africa. Saying, I know, but Morgan, Morgan Freeman, Freeman does an accent. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say. Well, <laughs> Jerome? <laughs> <laughs> he might be the narrator. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. We don't know. On the third day. But they, uh, the only... I don't know if I was about to say that. Um, Timon is like... Billy My homie Cam Hitchner. can do a great Morgan Freeman. Uh, act. We'll get him on the podcast. Shout out Cam. Time. Yeah, shout out Cam. He can do a great... Morgan Freeman accent uh, impersonation. That's crazy. Jamie Foxx ain't in it. Like uh, none of the people that I really want in it are, are they're not in. Key it. from Key and Peele. He playing one of the, the hyenas. hyenas. Mm-hmm. No, uh, Whoopi as oh, a hyena. Whoopi. She was the one of the originals. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Who's the bird? Uh, who's the bird? I need to know who. John is Oliver. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's he in? What was he in? Oh. Okay, no, that's that's what that's I just want y'all to know that both Roz and uh Rome got y'all excited for this movie that's never gonna happen. Uh, it better happen, <laughs> but it's good to it imagine. It's scheduled to release January 19th, it's just like the chance of rapper Childish Gambino album, it's never gonna happen. When is hey. Chance gonna come out with something new? I've been waiting on that. Well, he killed that, uh. He killed the uh, the joint on Cardi B's yes. album, Best yes. Life. Cause it's been what Three years maybe Two Yeah man But hey listen man You ride the wave Of that mixtape That mixtape is classic Yeah Classic mm-hmm. What no problems Like what you I see, I see yeah Woo <laughs> <laughs> Anyways man Well listen man I'm, I'm excited man I hope Hope um, Mr. Glover Puts out some more music man Um, And I hope that um, That uh, Black Twitter Gets off his back about his partner being Caucasian, uh, because um, what I've learned is is if your partner's Caucasian, it makes you less black, um, and you uh, your blackness decreases if your partner is, is Caucasian. It seems to be a common consensus on 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 the. Black social media on black everything. Yeah, Ross, what's your take on it? <sighs> I, just, I it's I don't know. I, 
for me is you uh, would you date a white guy yes would you marry a white guy probably not because not to sound too religious unequally yoked i don't know how i would be able to with the way society is now i it's marriage spiritual or physical I mean, not to. I got so many. There's. Because if it's spiritual, why does, does color matter? I'm just asking. No, color doesn't matter. I just want to. If it's not about color, it's about relating. Even if it was Hispanic, would you be able to. Because we all have different struggles. Hispanics, Hispanics are blacks. So I don't listen. If you ain't white, you black. <laughs> I mean, no, but I mean, er, individuals have. Different backgrounds, backgrounds different. Backgrounds, different. As minimal as traditions, like, like where, ever, we're, where we going to spend, eat? Like, I mean, that's in everything. You, you ever like, met a, a black person that has no traditional black qualities? I remember, mm. I, I remember in college, I met a black girl who essentially hated the fact that she was black. And she had, she displayed no traditional black characteristics. She didn't love yeah, any heard. other thing. You, you, I've happened? heard, yeah, I've heard somebody... She was African American and she identified as Caucasian. Why? Like, like legit. Like I remember. And so what I'm saying is that person's. So let's say you met a guy like that. Are you still saying that? You know, what I mean, that that couldn't happen. Like. I mean, at the end of the day, I I probably said no, but honestly, at the end of the day, if there's love there and treatment is right, then. I probably would, but right now I'm saying no because I you don't have, know. I don't know, and I have blinders on. To be honest, I probably have what unforeseen be, what, biases that I don't know that are deep down that are just blocking me from. What would be your num? What would be like your main reasoning behind why you wouldn't like right now in this moment? Why are you so confident that you wouldn't? Um, pursue a relationship a marital relationship with a person that's white the first thing that comes to mind is family acceptance just from both sides family accepting him and me being accepted over there that's honestly when you started even forming your question that's what came to mind and i don't know why that is but because at the end of the day it's our relationship outside individuals shouldn't have any type of impact on it but yeah, you marry. You marry. You marry into a yeah, family. You marry you into want, a family. That's a part of the package. Yeah, and I just, I don't know. It's it's really like at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, I guess it's me. It's like, it's like, okay, are they gonna accept my natural hair? Am I always gonna have to have it straight? <laughs> like they gonna like my twist? Like it? Just, like I said, maybe it's just me and my my blinders are on the other side. Are they gonna? So you think you gotta be job interview ready all the time? Yeah. I think that's I think that's where it's stemming from. Like if if uh, incidents like with like um simple ass Starbucks, will they understand where I'm coming from if I was if I'm upset about it? Like or am I gonna have to shove that down or have to always explain and I and You'd be the spokesperson for black people. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. This whole kneeling thing during the anthem. And I mean, I mean, it wouldn't be anything different because I mean, I've gone through school with it, being the only one in the classroom. So Perfect. And what I'm saying is, let's say Brad. We're gonna call him Brad. That's just, a, <laughs> That's just a, uh, excellent. Uh, or Josh. No, nah, there's a lot of black uh, Josh. Uh, yeah, I like Brad. Brad. So Brad, listen. <laughs> Brad got that thing. Whatever that thing is you like, Brad got that thing. Okay. He got that thing. Bradley. Brad. Yeah. Bradley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And so what I'm what I'm what I'm saying is whew, he he makes you feel like you, like no one has ever made you feel. Then I would I would like I said, at the end of the day, love Ying and yang. feelings. What did you say the other day? You said, you know, there's a a compliment. A compliment, though, that, you know, there's always, there's, you were talking about the salt in the roads. There's always a, oh, there's pros oh, and cons. Okay. Double edged swords, what, he, what mm-hmm. Rome always says. 
So Brad You know what I mean He got that thing Like you might just have to Embrace the fact that And I probably all Everything that I probably Saying right now If it was to happen Y'all play this back Be like Roslyn You said this this and that And I'll be like Well Let's put blueberries In his macaroni that don't even make no sense. <laughs> they, 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 they try like, it. <laughs> what is the culinary reasoning behind that? Are you doing sweet and savory? Like, what are you doing with that? Like, that's a legit question. Like, so, just... so let me ask you this. Back, 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 back on topic. Cause we'll, we'll leave Brad alone because uh, I think Brad is in your future. But I like um, Bradley. Can we say his full Bradley? name? Bradley. Oh, okay, Bradley. Yeah, he could be Brandon. Like Brad. Bradley. Bradley. He like Bradley. I mean, um, like Ivy League. So, so, but yeah, my, my friends call me Brad. Uh, <laughs> Rod, she's so amazing, dude. Like, I just love her. <laughs> the way she like twists her hair, man. It's, like, it's amazing. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh my goodness! He be going that. back. He, he be going back to the to to the uh you know the top golf out. Dude, if you ever had, if you ever had lemon pepper on your wings, bro, <laughs> fucking amazing, man. Jordan's just, fish and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, new sneaks, man. Yeah, Ross got Lars. Lars. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, d- does it make? Does it make? Um. Childish Gambino's message less effective, knowing that he has a white spouse. When I when I first heard that, it didn't phase me. Like honestly, I was like, I was like, oh really? I was like, okay. It was like one of those things. I was like, oh well, that's whatever. You- but I don't, I don't feel like just because who you spouse, married, girlfriend, whatever they are. That doesn't change his perspective and what his America is. It and doesn't change his plight because he still has the plight of yeah. a black man in America. And I mean, then that's, and I feel like music, art, creativity, that's a form of your expression in, in, and uh, interpretation of what your surroundings are. If that's what his America is, then that's all for it. And if I can relate to that, that shouldn't, me, well, the way I'm thinking, that shouldn't change because oh he's in a relationship with somebody that's white or outside of the black community yeah like i i mean not going back to your statement i do agree sometimes it's like oh you're you're not that black then if you're with i don't understand that though because i mean at the end of the day however many years i lived my life without this individual I was still black. I still had to go through whatever situations I went through, struggles, achievements. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. <clears throat> so, uh, I, on a thread that I read, uh, it was a black black girl who said she was black. She said, let's be real. Let's be honest. Black girls, black women, don't be checking for the weird black dudes. They said, she was like, she was basically saying like, you know, He's weird. Like, look at the way he dresses. Mm-hmm. Like, I think for like for a while, one of his things was like he wore like the same sweater for like a very long time. <laughs> like he 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 he, he killed like a a crazy. I think a, a freestyle on sway, I believe. And this sweater that he'd been wearing. It, Charlotte May, he was out in the Breakfast Club. But Charlotte May was like, "Me, you look homeless." Like, <laughs> but it was this sweater that he'd been wearing. Um, I think even on the interview, he talked about not bathing regularly. Like, yeah, you know I'm saying like he just. And so anyways, yeah, so anyways, this this black girl was saying, like, you know, if we're all honest, if we're all being real, you know what I mean, we go back to, you know, the high schools that we went to, the fly black chicks are not checking for this individual. What's, person. What, what is she considered like, weird, though? Because I but mean, weird like, being like, like Laura, Laura and Urkel. Like oh, he's okay. weird. He's okay. he doesn't dress fly. It's, yeah, he's, he's not, nerdy. He, more he's than not life. an athlete. He's not, you know, part of the boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he is. Those are the types I. I'm like they're always friends, but then I always think I'm like, oh, he's probably really dope. Like for outside of the friend zone, like I don't, because I think I'm weird, low key. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, yeah, like sports and athletics and all that but sometimes i want to just 
do some abstract art. I want to, I don't know what may not be considered normal. Yeah. Or, yeah, I like poetry. I want to do spoken word. I want to, like, stuff. I mean, that that's probably, but, like. Like, like going camping. Like, <laughs> Donald yeah. Glover looks like he goes, like. Like, I'm hiking go and camping. camping, like, religiously. Like, I want to go most free black people are not like, yo, bro. I don't really, <laughs> maybe you just want somebody who can go swimming. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, right. I only mess with bugs like that, G. Like, I'm not go going canoeing. Like, like, I want to do. You're not about to catch me on a canoe, my guy. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm good. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, anyways, uh, I, I'll speak a little bit from my, my personal experience. In high school, um, I was very popular. Um, you know, I won um, homecoming court my my uh, junior year, I believe, and was on prom court my junior year, and uh, so I was very popular. Um, but I did show choir in high school. Um, I was, you know, um, involved in church uh, a lot, um, and I did like a lot of acting. Rise of her uh, jazz fingers uh, over here. <laughs> jazz fingers like on ten. Uh, I did a lot of acting, a lot of, I was a thespian, uh, not a lesbian in high school. Uh, <laughs> and so anyways, I can honestly say from my experience, like the, 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 the most attractive black chicks didn't really check for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They just didn't, that didn't really change until I hit college. When I hit college, then the black, I feel like you, I met a different caliber of I was about to say. A black woman, you know what I'm saying, in college. Okay. So things change in college. But I don't have four years of like getting overlooked, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, by people who look like me because I was not a varsity athlete. I was the only person on prom court that wasn't, you know what I'm saying, a varsity athlete. Um, I also wasn't like the tough guy. Like I, I got along with everybody. I was cool mm -hmm. with everybody. I could sit at any table at lunch and people would know who I was. Which is part of the reason why, you know what I'm saying, I got voted on because I just knew a lot of people and I just was, you know. But I got overlooked a lot, you know what I'm saying. Um, was your high school and college environment the same, like, demographically? Uh, I would say, yeah, similar. Okay. Um, it was similar. So, you know, what would you what would you say? I'll play 80. 80, 80 no, nah, I'll probably, probably 60, 90. I mean, not 60, 90, uh, 60, 30, 60, 40, 40, I'm not mad, over. 60, 40, 65, 35, that's, that's perfect, 65, 30, I think 65% was white, 35% mm -hmm. was other, yeah, just other, and so, you know, um, I think the same thing was true, mm -hmm. uh, when I went to, uh, to college as well, but anyways, um, that's just, that's just my personal experience, I'm not saying that, yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not making a blanket statement that if you weren't uh you know an athlete a varsity athlete football basketball star or you know what I'm saying a trap god <laughs> I'm not saying that you were getting past that you were getting past but maybe there was a guy out there who really got you know I mean who, who was you know but then it goes back to you know uh we know that fatherlessness is an epidemic in across all racial boundaries right mm -hmm. It's not people like to think or like to portray it as just a black thing, but it's it's everywhere. Um and a lot of the successful black males that we encounter as young black people um are entertainers. Hmm. Uh, athletes, you know True. what I'm saying? Um or they're rappers who are rapping about <laughs> what they rap about. So it, it only makes sense that in high school these young ladies were attracted wanted. to those individuals. And so I did not fit the, that, that critique whatsoever. I didn't fit that, that category. And I felt like I got overlooked a lot. Um, and I think that attributed to, you know, uh, my preference later on. Um, uh, my wife is white, <clears throat> but right before, uh, I dated her, I dated like four black chicks and, uh, they were all cool. Just wasn't the right time. You know what I'm saying? Um, one had a baby. She almost got my last, almost got my last name. But then I was just like, ah. And then there was another one. She was cool too, but it's weird. But I she's feel like that weird. can be your whole 
perception about how you were involved in your different activities. I feel like that can be said too for young black females because I grew up in suburbia. And yeah. I mean, oh yeah, nah. Listen, if was, you ain't got. Oh, I'm the, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, I grew up like <laughs> nobody. I was a church girl. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I played. I did sports. Um, but I was. I tried out for show choir. I didn't wanted to act and all of that. Yeah, but you didn't have a Kool Aid color hair and. Ah, uh, uh, no, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm about to say I had You ain't got them cheeks out You ain't got the cheeks out You not You know what I mean I'm about to say I was Yeah no Modest only, probably mm, Yeah The only yeah. time somebody saw me in a dress Was at prom And they and they was like what? Thrown off right Yeah like, oh, Do them all the way <laughs> It was like It's like yes I put on heels And everything else But yeah I was like You ain't had a jersey dress You ain't had a jersey dress I didn't have one of those That's why okay, I went to the fair okay, <laughs> it didn't stay fair. With the Melissa's, uh, with the, the clear. Melissa, those, I think they were called uh, jellies. Jellies. This, yeah, there you go. I ain't had those though. I okay. just had some. All regular. I know is is that somebody like Donald Glover, I can I can understand his plight. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, um, it's it's hard being you know different, I guess, um, and quote unquote weird. You're not the typical. You know, uh, stereotypical black kid. What was your experience like, Ron? Um, you were in band. Yeah, I was. Oh yeah, I was in band too. I played the saxophone. Yeah, so band, band, band people grade. were super weird. <laughs> <laughs> There's no like, uh, like yo, y'all weird. Like I've been doing this since sixth grade. Really? Like y'all weird. Like you know what I'm saying? Band was cool though, man. Really? I feel like I feel like most people, you know, if I if I can remember, like a lot of people didn't start band in high school. Like it was like if you, I know yeah. we started in. We got introduced in, in third school. grade. Oh no! Oh, yeah. We had like fourth. In- <laughs> yeah, 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 oh yeah, you was a suburbia for real. Huh? Yeah, yeah, they had that type of money. My right mama here. couldn't afford the instrument. No, like, no, but I'll do percussion, mama. I mean, this was about to say. We, we, we had we had the rent to buy plan. My mama. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah, I was we like, all was on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your experience? No, mama was just about the same. I was a band geek, and like you know, I dated a. Out my race a couple times. Uh, I wouldn't say date. Um, yeah, you dabbled. I dabbled a couple times. We've all been there. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Same thing, you know. You shoot your shots, you miss them a lot, and you just kind of do your thing for all who, who who gets you, and you know. Fast forward, ten years removed from high school, them chicks that was like. Bad in high school are literally doing bad in adulthood. Like <laughs> I always hear that. Like No, it's so uh, true. You no, know, like on both like, ends. Yo. It's just like whoever like you high school, you go back to that reunion or you see them, it's like, oh, okay. Oh yeah. yeah. This is what you did? This is where you at? Kid number seven for you? <laughs> yeah. Oh. All dead beats, <laughs> and they already had kids they didn't take care of. <laughs> okay, oh. all right, you made the right choices in life. <laughs> so yeah, nah, man. Um, but nah, I, I just I think it's interesting, man. That um, I, I think it's a dumb thought or a dumb um, belief um, to say that you know you uh, you can't be pro black and date mm-hmm. or be with someone who is um, who isn't. Um, Black, because the fact of the matter is, I know white people who are more pro black than some black people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, if you if you want to keep it one thou wow, I just think that's the go to for people who try to find something wrong with. I them. mean, they try to get a Kendrick when they finally figure out that his She's, she was what's her name light uh, skin like they wanted Charain. to crazy. drag him. Her real name is Sharon. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, no, think, I, I think, think that's that just the, the name on the album. Yeah. Like, but uh, the, the guy who plays Luke Cage, yeah, oh, okay. came after him. They come after everybody. Yeah. Guy who played Martin Martin Luther King in Selma. Oh, but then the flip came for him. Flip side is I feel like it's always funny. It's like when they came a, for a white guy gets a black man. No one woman, came for Serena. Like a like when the 
I done lost my train of thought. When a white guy or a black female gets a white woman, it's a totally different response. Like when Dirk Nowinski, when they figured out he got a black wife. Yeah. Oh man. And, <laughs> and he had he went to the game with a full pan. Yeah. She was sitting. They said she sent him with a yeah. with a plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the game, yeah. baby. Yeah. Take I, this. This is more. I feel like it's more of like. I, I like think a praise I, for lack of a better that's term. That's what I'm saying. Like nobody came for Serena. Yeah. Like, I think, if anything, they was mad. They was like, "Why is she marrying down? She got that for." I heard that they was like, "He's not." I know, but they're like, "But she could do all. But she could do this by herself. Why does she want to marry?" Like it was. I've heard different sides I, I think regarding her. Guys, they. So in black culture, men are like the end all to be all. They they hold us to like a higher standard, like. We got to be strong enough to take whole black women up and deal mm-hmm. with whatever they give you. Like, and then if a white guy get a black girl, they like, man, he, he dope. He can handle that. Like he, <laughs> Hey, big ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like if a white dude can hoop, it's like, Oh, okay. So you can run with us. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, I get it. It's like, Oh, Billy Hoyle. That's you. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eminem. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. So you got to the cookout. Right. Right. <laughs> So I think it's one of those like oh black men ain't strong enough to have them. so when they cross over they like oh he can handle her oh he in there he get mm-hmm. an ultimate pass oh yeah <laughs> so well regardless man shout out to to Charles Gambino for uh um starting the conversation uh creating dope art you know um on this show Atlanta um mm-hmm. you know which is an amazing show um with this with the, with his music. Um, um, just kudos to him, man. And All his achievements, you know, he was uh one of the first he black. Got a Grammy. Huh? He That's won a Grammy, Grammy for uh, Red Bone. Um, he was the one of the first primary black like writers for SNL. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, then he did. He was a writer for the show Community, and uh, and most people don't know that he um he consulted for. Uh, Black Panther for like uh, some committee comedy oh, extras in there. That's what's up, man. Well, listen, keep going, uh, Donald. Keep it moving. Um, make it happen, man. Um, well, Roz, listen, we thank you so much for, for joining us. We, oh, thanks for having me. Definitely appreciate, appreciate it. it. Did you have a good time? Yeah. I enjoyed this. Well, throw your plug in there one more time before we get off of this. Yes, yes. So you can find uh, Encourage, I-N-C-O-U-R-A-G-E, on Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, we have a page, so you can call, go like us. And we also have a group. If you find anything interesting, just ask to join. We will accept you. And then on uh, Instagram, it is um, Encourage Fitness, LLC. Um, so we're legit. We're legit. You taking uh, new clients? Yes, always, always. And our information, uh, our email address is on our uh, social media pages. And you can initially get through us that way. And then as they move forward, you can get the actual phone number. I don't want any stalkers or anything. <laughs> no buyers. <laughs> no brats. <laughs> hey, well, listen, if they man, paying, is, then uh, yeah. yeah. Right, if they paying, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, Rob, you got any announcements, man? Uh, no, no, no. I don't have anything this week. Um, no, I think I'm square this week. I don't think I got any new big announcements or nothing like that. Swag. Well, listen, man. This is the Culturally Correct Podcast. We thank you guys so much for listening. I really feel like your mom should be listening to this podcast, too. So, if you haven't, please like, share, you know, comment, you know what I mean? Uh, send this to your church group. You know what I mean? They need to hear this, too. You know what I mean? Uh... Uh, we definitely appreciate Ross for coming through And uh, we look forward to uh, Having you back on in the future For yes. sure yeah. um, You know uh, But this is the Culturally Correct Podcast We have to get your partner on here soon Because it's going to be Smoking the city now Oh yeah nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah nah listen It's about to be a problem Just know that I was trying to Like you know what I'm saying Take your side in the beginning of this sis. I don't want you to think that I wasn't like, Wait, I, was, I, thought, I actually thought that was what I do think I, I thought, that's what I said That's what I thought too but, uh, Oh that's what you was getting there That's what I was getting there earlier oh. yeah, I was like you know I thought she hit us with the assist But Rome is taking all the credit Okay All of it Let me not just listen 
<laughs> Roz is like my little sister. Yeah, no, nah, I feel you. I feel we all family. We all well, listen, man. Also, be on the lookout uh, for you know uh, events and things of that nature. We're gonna be doing uh, with these next couple of months. And um, yeah, man, just continue to support. And um, thank you guys so much for listening. It's the culturally correct show. I'm out. See ya. <laughs>